going on my ear more brothers back again this should be quick and this is gonna be slightly off the beaten path i normally do this on my community tab where i post charts i don't do a whole lot of financial news even though i probably should because i used to you know follow this all the time and he had caught me even 15 years ago man i was you know I had a regular subscription to the Wall Street Journal. In fact, I still do. It's just digital. But I used to, you know, that was my morning paper, the Wall Street Journal. So even uh, if you had caught me like 15 years ago, shoot, I'd be steeped in it because I'd be constantly reading it, constantly studying it, constantly you know, going back and forth. Even though I stopped trading. When I stopped trading? I stopped trading in 2003, 2002, 2003. That's when I last, when I dropped off the trading path. But this is interesting because everybody's always fascinated with this. And uh, people hype stuff and they don't realize the fluctuations of, uh, of markets because, you know, it's, it's you know, because they've never traded before. And most guys that you see hyping aren't traders. They're, they're uh, investors, two different things. Because traders aren't wedded to a position. You never hear a trader saying something's going to the moon or that... Uh, this is the this is a you know a great bull market or something like that. Traders very seldom do that. Traders always talk about what's you know what's going to happen tomorrow, maybe next week. If the outside, they may give you a direction for a year because uh, traders aren't wedded to a position. You know, especially freaking day traders, which uh, had gotten hold of Bitcoin over the last couple of months. Because I, I was telling you guys that over the past couple of months is that Bitcoin is not there to buy right now. Bitcoin is there to trade. So if you're a trader, you can make money off of Bitcoin. If you're a buyer, I'd be really cautious about buying Bitcoin unless you're into it for the long haul. Anyway, let me read this article because uh, it's something I've been telling you guys for, for you know, for years, let, let alone months, because okay? people keep asking me questions about this. Uh, Bitcoin tumbles below $40,000 and other coins slide after China signals a crypto crackdown, wiping out $280 billion off the market. This is from the uh, Business Insider. Bitcoin and other major di digital assets sank on Wednesday after China warned investors about cryptocurrencies. Virtual currencies can't be used to conduct business as they don't have real value, China's central bank said. A price drop below $30,000 for Bitcoin wouldn't be surprising, senior market analyst said. An overall drop in the value of digital assets at one point wiped out $280 billion from the entire market. Bitcoin fell below $40,000 for the first time in 14 weeks, trade around $39,585. Binance coin fell 18% to 426. I gotta check out my Binance coin. The Dogecoin fell 17% to 40 cents and Ethereum's Ether fell 15% to 29.30. That's not too bad for Ethereum falling, but it's the last one to, to rise, so I'm not surprised. Virtual currencies couldn't be used in the market as they are not supported by revalued three Chinese payment industries said on Tuesday. Bitcoin continued its week-long slide, first sparked by Elon Musk climate-related concerns over its mining process. Billionaire Mike Novogratz predicted Bitcoin would consolidate somewhere between 40000 and 50000 for up to six weeks after Musk's criticisms of its energy use. Yeah, that's, that's bullshit by Musk. He knew what the Chinese were getting ready to do. Anyway, Tesla's cars are powered by electricity made from coal and gas. While Bitcoin mining is an energy-intensive process, that is said to consume more electricity annually than the whole of Argentina. <laughs> that is true. That's the problem with Bitcoin. As more coins are mined, the longer it takes to actually, longer the process actually takes. So it's, it is kind of labor intensive, kind of uh, energy intensive. It always has been. JP Morgan said in a note on Tuesday, institutional investors seem to be shifting away from Bitcoin and moving back toward traditional gold. Gold actually uses no energy. This indicates a reversal of the trend seen over the past six months. Really? Oh, yeah, that's right. Because everybody's moving away from solid assets. Bitcoin. They were the hot child of the week. It is not clear what is driving this shift. Strategist led by Nicholas. I'm not going to try to uh, pronounce his name. 
Perhaps institutional investors are fleeing Bitcoin as they see its previous two quarter uptrends ending and thus seek the stability of a traditional gold away from a, the rapid downshifting of digital gold. This is just people moving assets. Separately, blockchain research group Elliptic found the hacker group behind the Colonial Pipeline attack received $90 million in Bitcoin before it shut down last week. That has ratcheted up regulatory risk tremendously, according to Jeffrey Halley, a senior market analyst at Oneida. China's action raised the mercury on that front, and the colonial situation may finally spur the U.S. into action. I suspect they will not be alone. Halley said the drop in Bitcoin to below 30000 would not be surprising. Um, I'm sure the colonial thing had some things to do with it. And Elon Musk had some things to do with it. But the main thing I, I've always said is that the Chinese government, the CCP, is in charge of Bitcoin. If the CCP doesn't crack down on Bitcoin, then Bitcoin can either stay stable or keep rising. But at some point, I knew that the that the CCP or the Chinese government officials were, that do invest heavily in Bitcoin, believe it or not, were going to take profits. Now, this is not an open market. Okay, you got to remember, yet Bitcoin is controlled by the Chinese. Always has been, always will be. So, it's, it's, you know, you got a billion people, a billion and a half people, using Bitcoin as an asset. You know, that's a lot of people. That's that's a whole. That's bigger than the European market. So, you get a billion and a half people that are influenced by you know one one head of state or one one central government when they decide to shut it down and decide to go in a different direction that means that particular coin's assets going to drop will it drop completely probably not will it be hurt yes so people are probably still going to use it around the world but it won't be used as much until the chinese reverses its position they've done this before and the last time bitcoin plunged like this was because china's um economy was was put on lockdown for like three months because of COVID-19. That's where it hit the bottom at 3,800. And the reason that it rose is because one, the Chinese government opened back up and plus the American government pretty much shut down for shit damn near a year. So there wasn't anywhere for the money to go. So all the money that would normally go into the U.S. government and to the dollar went into Bitcoin, which is why Elon Musk jumped on a train and Elon Musk but probably jumped off the train when he saw that the Chinese government wasn't going to support it anymore. They took their profits and kept rolling because what is it? Last two weeks ago, three weeks ago, you know, Elon Musk took profit from the, from his Bitcoin holdings and earned like a hundred million dollars in profits. I said that should have been a signal. He knew something, and that's what I've been telling you. That's what I've been telling you. I said that at some point the Chinese government was going to take profits, and when they did, Bitcoin was going to slide. So this is. What you're probably seeing is that it's the uh, uh, Chinese, it's <laughs> the, the certain members that are holding Bitcoin, I'm sure there's a lot of them, uh, decided to get out of the business. And they're probably going to ride Bitcoin down so they can get back on the train again and make some more money. That's probably all it is. They're going to make themselves billionaires doing this kind of shit. So when you enter the coins, especially Bitcoin, I said Ethereum is probably, I think Ethereum is pretty much controlled by Latin America. That's the biggest use of Ethereum. But Bitcoin, I know. Bitcoin, I know, is basically the vast majority is used in China. And China does control the direction of Bitcoin. In fact, almost, they started shutting down miners like a month ago. So that should have kind of hipped you to what's getting ready to go on. So, you know, those that uh, got on the ride, got on the ride early, and uh, they made their was it 20 percent that shit hell that ain't bad 20 percent profit or 20 times profit not 20 percent you know you made 20 times your money you got in at the bottom and held on to the top and sold out which is what i would have done hey you know kudos to you you know kudos to so people like solo and a few others man y'all you guys uh you guys made your cash made your coin and uh, hopefully you did get out before before the plunge. And you know, hold you know, hold your dollars. It's, it's not done yet. Hold your dollars when, and get back on when the ride is getting ready to go back up. Now get off the get off the ride. You know, go get some popcorn, go eat some pizza, and then wait for the they'll you know, get back in line and wait for the ride to go up again. For you traders, you no, know, you know, traders are always waiting for the opportunity. Traders are, can always go in and out. So they play bounces. They don't need major waves because they play bounces. 
I'd ha have to look at the charts again for trading. This is probably not a good time to trade <laughs> because the volatility is way to the downside. It's way to the downside. This is probably not a great time to trade. But this is for the people that are new to it. This is the time where you get in and you study and you learn the, the characteristics of this beast. So all I can say is, is so far the so far my Fibonacci levels have been holding. They're not 100 percent. And as people that are doing Bitcoin trading that disagree with them, but so far they're they're, they're fairly on the money. And uh, they, you know, when when it got to be overbought and overbought territory, you know, that's why I put it up there that it seemed overbought. And sure enough, the bad boy came down. Now, did I expect it to come down this far this fast? No. Thought it would be a slower decline, but evidently the Chinese can't wait. They said, okay, you know, we need to better have our money right now. So, I mean, they took you on a, what, a 14-month ride? So, hey, can't, you can't sweat it. Can't sweat it. The ones that got in, took advantage of it, and made their cash, and got made their million dollars, and they're making the dash, as he says. You know, I, that reminds me of the song, uh, This Is How We Do It, huh? <laughs> and, this is how we do it. Yeah, you get on the uh, Bitcoin train, and you make your money, and sell a million bitcoins and making a dash and so you, you got your money get out so for you investors out there like i said this is why technical analysis is good because you know the signals to, to sell off were there you can't predict the exact moment when somebody's going to give up the ghost especially a big move like this but the signals were there that the that the top was in now my the, my only point is how far how, how many levels it was actually going to go down because uh, bitcoin is kind of really unpredictable especially for the long term. So I didn't think it crashed through this many floors and we'll have to see if it stabilizes at 32, which I think in, in the intermediate, it's gonna stabilize at 32. We gotta see if it's gonna hold there. If it holds there, then we may, you know, think about getting back in. If it does not, then it's gonna head down to 20,000. And at 20,000, I think it'll give a whole lot of people an opportunity to either get in or at least look around. Because at 60, you know, six, you know above 60,000, man, that's ridiculous. Ain't nobody can get in with that at that at that rate. It's uh, it's way too high. But I hope the, uh, the other people around that that were in you know, kind of got out and stood to the sidelines, and so that you can keep, as they say, keep your powder dry for the next run up. Because there's going to be another run. It's, Bitcoin's not done. Uh, uh, it's too lucrative, and the Chinese aren't ready to kill it just yet. There's a new Chinese digital currency that's. Uh, I don't know if it premiered, but I think it's getting ready to come onto the market that they're going to replace uh, Bitcoin with. But I don't think it's quite ready yet. So we still probably got one more run out of Bitcoin before they either let it run up to its top or they retire it. I don't know which, but we'll see. So uh, this is why we study charts. This is why we don't just read news and run around and listen to people hyping, whatever, because I'm not saying these people don't know what they're talking about. But the thing is, is that. I've seen this way too much, and there's way too much volatility for, th for this uh, particular instrument. And the only reason you have this much volatility because there ain't no interest rates, and there's no more no place for this money to go. So people can't grow their money unless they take risks with their money. But the thing is, I think people need to learn how to take calculated risk. Everything's a risk, but you got to take calculated risk when you deal in this. But anywho, I didn't want to make this long. I didn't want to belabor the point. And for people that are novices, let this be a lesson to you, okay? There's you, the, the first thing that they tell you when you're getting ready to trade or invest is when you enter the gate, it says, all ye that enter, abandon all hope. You can't invest on hope. You have to invest on knowledge and you gotta invest on logic and common sense. If you do those three things, you'll be fairly safe. And the first thing that they told us to do is minimize the risk. In other words, you get in at a buying point that's low risk. You can still lose money, but the thing is you want to minimize the risk as much as possible. And you want to adapt your strategy to the current market, to the current environment of whatever instrument you're actually going to invest in. Whether it's stock, whether it's a bond, whether it's oil, whether it's gold, whether it's Bitcoin. Okay, because when I look at them, I look at them at all, at all the same. Okay, I don't think one investment vehicle is any more... Uh, worthy than than another, right? They were, they all look the same to me. So Bitcoin looks just like investing in a dollar or gold or 
or the euros or oil or or stock. It's all about uh, taking your dollars, converting it into some to an appreciating asset, and then taking a profit. Point blank, period. So don't. That's how come people get excited about certain things, and I'm like, yeah, if you make money, you make money. If you don't, you don't. Well, that's just me. After doing this for 20 some odd years, it's, it's like old hat. Anyway. That's all I got for this one. This is BGS out, and I'll see you guys on the next one.